Whether you want to start making gaming videos or just recording your streams when you're live. Well, today I'm going to show you the very best settings in OBS Studio so you know exactly what to do from the get-go. And I'm going to give you a rundown on what those settings actually mean and what they do so you know what you're changing rather than just copying and pasting settings that you have no understanding of. And trust me, it might look daunting, but it is so, so simple. Before we get into those best recording settings, though, do you want to turn your long streams into viral shorts without having to spend hours editing? That is where Nexus Clips comes in. All of the biggest streamers are posting clips daily because that's just how new viewers discover people these days. TikTok, YouTube Shorts, shorts, Instagram reels. This is where people are finding streamers these days because it's so hard to just be organically found on Twitch. If you aren't posting clips already, then I'm sorry, but it's normal that people aren't discovering you and getting you the growth that you really want. With Nexus Clips, you can automatically create multiple viral ready clips from every single stream. They have a built-in AI that finds you the best moments, crops your horizontal streams or even videos into vertical perfectly using facial recognition, and it adds animated subtitles, a hook, a sticker, everything you need to keep somebody watching. You can even customize all of this to match your channel's colors and vibes. Every single stream will give you a massive list of clips and it'll even rank them by how viral they're likely to go. That way you know exactly which clips are going to perform best. So no more spending hours watching back and clipping your streams. Nexus Clips handles all of this for you so you can just focus on streaming, engaging with your chat and reaching new audiences every single day. So seriously, click that link down below to try it for free or use code CAL for 10% off of any order on that website and watch your content skyrocket and your growth on Twitch boom. Back to the video. Okay, so open up OBS and the first thing we're doing is heading straight to that settings button at the bottom right and then that'll open another window but then ignoring the first two options here and going straight to output and then if you change from simple to advanced like i have in this drop down at the top you'll have a very very specific recording section so the first option is of course recording path you can see that mine is saving to my videos folder but you can click browse and add that to be any folder on your pc or laptop whatever you want you can do it to your desktop if you wanted to the only piece of advice i would give here is if you do have an ssd or hdd ssd is always going to be better to save any corruption or files getting any issues but as long as you've got a good hard drive of no faults you shouldn't have any issues with that either that's what i do and it's been completely fine for years next up in the list is recording format and you can see that i've left it on mkv you might be tempted in the drop down to click on something like mp4 or mov because those are more familiar to you however mkv is actually the best choice not only will it reduce the file size because if you're recording in 4k or even 1080p it can sometimes make the file sizes really high whereas if you leave it mkv the file size will not only be smaller but it will also be safer because recording with mkv if you have any issues with a game crash with your system going down with a power cut, whatever it may be. It's actually going to keep all of the recording up until that point and it won't be corrupted. Whereas if you record in another format like .mov or .mp4, you might find that the entire recording is completely boned and none of us want that, do we? You might also be thinking, well, how do I get that into mp4 after I'm done so I can actually edit it? Well, there's two ways. If we exit out of here by clicking OK, you can go up to the top here, click File and Remux Recordings, and then you can search for it by clicking these three dots, click Remux, and it will put it straight into mp4 for you and it takes seconds. Second way to do that is if we go back to settings, if you go all the way to the bottom section, which is the advanced one, you can see that in the recording section here, you have an automatically remuxed to MP4 file. And that means that the minute you stop recording an OBS into MKV, it will automatically send that to an MP4 file for you to save you doing that extra step that I mentioned. But anyway, let's go back to the output section and the recording tab to continue. So after the format, you've got the video encoder and you can see that it will normally automatically select X264, which is not good. If you have this on and you've been recording and you've noticed sort of graininess or artifacting in your videos, then this very well could be why, because chat chances are if you're making gaming content or you're streaming and recording those you probably have a graphics card right whether that's nvidia or some amd system so if you click on the drop down you'll see that i have nvidia nvenc because i do have an nvidia graphics card and that's going to be the option you want and obviously if you don't have nvidia and you do have a different version they go with that essentially if you can avoid it get rid of x264 because that's not going to do you any favors it's going to make your videos really really bad especially if you do want to push it and record in 4k it's going to make the world of difference and also x264 eats up your cpu PU usage. So if you're doing what a lot of people do where they're recording whilst they're streaming, chances are if you're on X264 and your stream's lagging a little bit, it could even be caused by the recording that's happening in the background. So choose one of these, put that stress on the GPU instead, and trust me, you'll have a smoother video and a way better experience if you are happening to be live at the same time or even playing a game at the same time. Next up, audio encoder, which is normally defaulted to FFmpeg AAC. You can leave it on that. This one doesn't matter half as much as the video one. And then audio track. This just means how many tracks that your audio is recording to. And you can see that I've only got one selected which is just recording all of my audio from game mic everything onto one track but you can make it so that your microphone audio your game audio any stream alerts everything can be separated on different tracks to make editing a breeze i know that not everyone will be fussed about that so i'll leave a video up here that goes through that if you want that too but we're going to move on for now because that is a little bit of a trickier setup now we're going through the basics the next three columns you can leave alone these really do not matter we're going to jump down to the encoder settings box and the rate control here so cbr is constant bitrate. this is better for sort of a steady flow where it's prioritizing
prioritizing your stream over your file types realistically. Basically, CBR is prioritizing being live and kind of recording in the background, and it can sometimes lose a bit of quality in more complex scenes. And that's why I'm going to suggest using CQP, the next thing below that. This stands for Constant Quantization Parameter, which is a really complicated but fun word to say. This gives you a way more consistent video quality, even with complicated or varying file sizes. So if you're looking for higher quality video, yes, the file size might jump up a little bit by using this option, but your video will thank you for it because it'll be way better quality with less issues coming up. Now, the CQ level will auto set to 20, which is a little bit high. I'd recommend maybe trying it around 15, 16 and then upping it slowly if you can handle it. But if you're having any issues, lower it again and again and again. I would probably stick it on maybe 18 just to be on the higher end, but without going way too high. With keyframe interval, I honestly just leave this on zero. This is what it kind of presets as. And honestly, it's never really been something that I've even considered a problem. So I would just leave it alone, play with it a little bit if you want. Some people raise it by one or two. Um, sometimes that helps, but really it's up to you. Now the preset, mine has gone to P5, which is pretty good. It's good quality, but P7 is the best. So this is going to purely depend on the spec of your machine. If you have specs through the roof and a brand new PC that can run anything without any problems, just go on P7 because it's going to be the best version there. Similarly, if you have an outdated PC, you can go down to P1, P2, P3, which isn't going to be as great quality, but it will still give you the recording you need. And if you're at all worried and you don't know where you are and you think you're mid-range, then just go in the middle. There's quite a lot of options here, so you can kind of sit exactly where your PC would allow. I typically do leave mine on P5 or P6 just because it means the quality is still good, but it isn't stressing out my PC, which does have some outdated parts at this point. And then the next three things here, the tuning, multipass mode, and profile, they all just set themselves up to be completely fine, so you don't really have to fit all those either. So that is it for that tab. We're going to hit apply here, and then we're going to go across to audio next to sort out the audio for the recordings as well. And we're basically going to go down and change all of these to 320 because they're going to start at 160 usually. Bitrate is basically how many kilobits of data it will translate per second. So essentially, the higher this is, the higher quality of the audio that it's pulling through for you. To give you an example of what this kind of means, 320 is kind of the audio quality you'd expect from a CD. And it's the highest in OBS, of course, so that's what we're going to select. This is nowhere near as stressful on your PC as some of the video stuff, so you can afford to put this all the way up and you shouldn't have any problems there. And then again, once you've got all of those to 320, just click apply and click OK. That will save all of those settings that you've just set up. And then the last very basic things to check if you are going to be recording stuff like a game is your desktop audio. Just go to properties here. This will be where your game audio or whatever your recording comes through. So just make sure this is set to what you're hearing so you know that you can monitor it. So for example, my headset is selected, which is perfect. Click OK there. And then the same on your mic and aux. Press the three dots, go to properties, make sure the right microphone is selected. My PC is plugged into this fine, fine mic over here. So again, perfectly fine. And like I said, if you do want to split the tracks, we'll have those more in-depth audio settings. There is that video that I've put up above and I'll leave it down below as well. And then the very last thing in the basics list is go to settings one more time, go to the video tab and just make sure that your base resolution is the resolution that you want to be filming in. So this would be 1080p. If you wanted to do 4K, do 3840 by 2160 and it'll be in 4K and we're done. That should be everything you need to get going with high quality recordings on OBS. And hopefully you've got a bit of a better understanding of what all of those settings mean and what they do. If you want some free Twitch artwork before you go, my website will be down below with a ton of free packs as well as a very cheap everything pack that gives you all the stuff you need to get going on Twitch. Whilst you're down there, you'll also find our community Discord, which has 300 plus other streamers and creators just like you. So if you want to make some friends or get some advice, then feel free to hop on in. We would love to have you. In the meantime, here's your last chance to subscribe before you go. And here is another video that you might find helpful on your streaming or creative journey. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Mwah.